Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. Today, we are traveling ourselves across Iowa towards the town of Ottumwa, Iowa, in search of something I have found on Facebook Marketplace. Right now, we're in the process of rebuilding the new shop, so everything cars is on hold because all of my tools are scattered between two locations and I don't want to start any big projects before we move stuff, blah, blah, blah. But I think I can get away with working on some small stuff, which is exactly what we're going to do today. So without further ado, allow me to show you why we're headed to Ottumwa. Right there, and right there, it's the two 85 Honda 125M three-wheelers. Let's dig them out. Let's get a better look at these before we pull them out. Make sure they spin. Oh, that one turns over. Here's the other one. This one actually looks, this one actually looks pretty decent. This guy might be stuck. Man, this thing is buried by Honda trail frames. CT70. <laughs> Honda ATC 125M, four speed, Honda Matic, uh, it's all here, all the plastics are present, uh, the tank is in pretty good shape, the engine spins over, the brakes don't work, but as is tradition, shift lever moves, it's got neutral light, electric start, it works, so I'm pretty sure that's what the M gave you, was the rest of those options for electrical start and whatnot. The, uh, the higher trim model, if you will. I think this was the last year of the horizontal engine. In 86, they went to the verticals. So let's go ahead and get this sucker drug out and start working on the other 125M that you guys haven't really seen yet. There's a 73 charger next to the building those three wheelers were in. And now that, we might have to come back here. All right, we made it home. And I have John with me here today. You guys remember him from the 79 Bronco Revival camping trip, which was awesome. Uh, it's been a minute since I've seen you, sir. Yes, it has. We've it's had a long, a long winter break between classes, like two and a half months. Yeah. Which has yeah. been amazing. Anyway, 
Back on topic, we have the two Honda 125s exactly as you saw them uh, in the shop. So we're ready to start working on these. Actually, sorry, there's one difference since we last saw them. This one, if you guys remember, I tried pulling it over on camera and it was like, and it went pull. And I thought about it and I was like, you know what? I bet since these are electric start, I bet that uh, Bendix is froze on the flywheel. And I bet if they warm up, which they have, it will free up. So let's see. Oh yeah, it's, it's already fixed. It's just got compression. The guy said it's got a bad motor, but I think the starter was just stuck. I don't know what it is about Hondas, man, but they I don't die. Well, every time I buy one in the winter, everything is seized. They're total piles of junk. Nothing like moves or works. And you bring it in and let it warm up. And then you just ride it for two years. So this one still has a frozen throttle and a frozen choke. Uh, I'm sure that carb is, oh, there we go. Oh, that's right, the 125s have flip up plastics. Hell yes. You know what, I've actually never worked on one of these small frames before. I, I don't know what you're actually supposed to call these. I call them the stamped frame three-wheelers or ATCs because the frame is two halves of a stamped piece of sheet metal that is welded together. Whereas the larger frame trikes are all an open tube chassis, such as this 200M. How do we want to do this? One at a time, two at a time? I say what we do is we have like a speed round and we try and <laughs> get one going. Just see if one will pop off. Just like straight away and yeah, then right dig away. into it? Yeah. You know, yeah, we can totally do that. I mean, we haven't checked spark or anything. All right, let's go ahead and pop this sucker open. Dude, look at that rack. What a unit. Held on there with, what is this, rubber? <laughs> and bushings and washers and a big giant bolt. My favorite part though, the hitch ball welded to the rack. That's ingenuity. We gotta pull a trailer with this now. <sighs> oh my gosh. Dude, it's like pristine in there. That's, that's amazing. That's the cleanest Honda tank I think I've ever seen. In my life. Yeah, that's. There's a beautiful, and it's still the M tank too. We got a little repair work. No, that's just the middle. Okay, looks like we don't have to take our air box off because it's a, uh, it's missing our hose here. So that makes that easy. Let's go ahead and pull this guy and see if we got spark. Oh, it's already ripped, so I can just see it. You want to give the quarter rip, sir? Yes, sir. Oh, we got spark. Hell yeah, dude. This thing is so screwed up. <laughs> the coil's just hanging here. The tires are flat, it's covered in dust and duct tape, it's rusty as hell. She'll run. She'll, She'll probably run. run. She'll run. After the apocalypse and the bombs drop, people are still going to be riding these things around. Oh, you, that's... Guarantee it. You better, <laughs> you better make it up to Ames. Cause... They're going to be like, cock they're going to be riding around with all the cockroaches. You better make it to Ames because we're going to have to fix them first. <laughs> but then we're going to be set. Alright, let's get a tripod set up and see if this sucker runs. Well, first let's clean the carbon. Clean. And, and now let's try to run it. <laughs> give, <laughs> give her a rip. I bet it lights. Dude, I bet it lights run. Right. Okay, man. There, there it is. <laughs> Every time. She's minty. straight up a runner uh let's yeah let's just flush the tank out reinstall it throw some gas at the carb and see if it's just straight up good to go because we might not even have to take this carb off no and rebuild it that trike however has a stuck carb so we're probably gonna have to at least take that one apart if not just go ahead and throw it in the ultrasonic cleaner in which case if we do that we'll just take them both off and throw them in there so that we don't have problems out on the trail because it's better to be prepared than be Dumb? I, what am I looking for You're here? not prepared. Ooh. So now that we just throw some fuel at this one and see if it lights off as well? Might as well. Have you looked inside this tank yet? I have not. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, that's more Different like story. it. Different <laughs> story. A little bit rusty on this guy. Dude, this is terrible. Smell this. Yeah. <laughs> that's not yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, I'm dying. So this one definitely sat filled with fuel. Yeah. 
and that um, that's probably explains why your throttle stuck. stuck. I'm just gonna give it a shot anyway. I don't expect it to do anything since it can't breathe. Go for it. No freaking way! No way! The choke is froze closed. The throttle's froze closing. Doesn't care. Runs. Hit it. Thanks, man. fuel in here. I flooded it that bad. Oh, okay. My but dude, this one sounds potentially better. Okay, well, we have two runners. Let's do some card work and make them riders. No! <laughs> Gone forever. Gone forever. It has a reserve, and it's a separate line. I thought one, I, I always thought one was for a vent, but... Uh, ooh! Ooh. That's some good stuff. That was yummy. We got some rags in here, I think. Yeah, I think so over here. Mm, straight black. Not even like poop gas color, just straight black gas. I'd use that to stain my deck. <laughs> That's straight varnish right there. <laughs> oh, there's still some in there. Here's what's coming out. <laughs> Dude, that is probably the worst gas I've ever seen. And we just got back from the Bronco Revival a couple weeks ago. We'll set that there to drain and start working on the carb. So our carburetor's froze up, and that's not that uncommon of a problem. The choke is not actually froze, it's the cable I'm finding out right now. Ooh, but does our transmission appear to work? I'm gonna go with no, so that could be interesting. I think I might remember Ezra saying something about the transmissions on these not being very good. I could be wrong. Let's see if we can get this um, throttle slide to come out. Oh yeah, he's stuck. There he goes. Just got some varnish on it. Carb looks good. So here's a great tip. If you're ever having carb issues on old Honda and you don't want to have to take the carb all the way off, this works way more than it should. Um, <laughs> The way these work is this sits in this bore and slides up and down and acts as a throttle by uncovering the intake hole. And this needle is what meters the fuel. This sits down in the uh, main jet and as it comes out it gets thinner and allows more fuel into the engine. Uh, the great thing about this is you can get the straw of a carb cleaner can or brake cleaner and stick it down that jet and hit go. Watch your face, don't put it right over it. Or you'll get it in your face. And that's never fun. And that will inject carb or brake cleaner directly into the base of the carburetor, into the bowl, and help free up any crap in that main jet. Uh, if you're out riding and you start having some problems where it starts getting lean and stumbling, just pop the top of this carb off, do this quick. A lot of times, if stuff gets jammed up in there, this will clear it up and you'll be good to go. I've done that fix many a much time. I think in the last Honda Revival, this is literally how we cleaned the car, was just like that. And then we were done. So we'll put this back on. And now the throttle works. No longer sticking. Hell yeah. Okay. Our uh, trail fix carb clean is done. Throttle moves. Let's see if it runs any. You had lights too. Did I really? Yeah, you had lights. The electrical works? Are you kidding me? It, it, it lit up. Let's see if we can get the feed cleared out here. I thought this one was going to fight us all day, dude. Oh yeah, that's that's a big leak. Do you see it coming out? Oh my, yeah. That's... They're plug solid full of rust too. If you feed it fuel on the bottom, it's good to go. Couple tips here. 
if you have one of these fuel selector switches and they're in the correct position, be it on a reserve, just leave it. Don't touch it or you'll snap that seal like I just did. Uh, unfortunately, this was an off, so I had to turn it, which sucks. So we'll have to figure something out for this. Uh, another tip, if you're rebuilding a carburetor that matters on like a street bike or a dirt bike or something, don't use brake cleaner or carb cleaner because they have a lot of rubber O-rings and for whatever reason, it destroys all of the O-rings and they turn to goo. Uh, I ran into that in the past, so do as I say, not as I do. Uh, however, I have found that just spraying straight down that main jet on these old Hondas is, for whatever reason, just fine. But if you're doing a real carb rebuild, don't use a brake cleaner or a carb cleaner. I mean, you can use it once the carb's totally disassembled, but you're going to have to get all new gaskets. Don't use it on something you expect the gaskets to remain in one piece. Let's get a fuel tank and throw some fuel at it and see, see where it leaks. Yeah, see if it leaks not under pressure, because the thing about the uh, brake clean is it's under pressure. So, and then we'll also see if it fills the bowl and it's just straight up ready to go. It's got plenty of fuel in the line. I don't, I don't see a leak, do you? I don't know. Not from the, uh, there's something in the line, but not, not over here like I anticipated. Unless it goes in the top one. It could be. And our needle and seat might be stuck too, so this will be a double test. Uh, does that start leaking and does our needle and seat work? She's gonna be good to go, she's good to go. She wants to choke. So here's what I'm gonna to try to do. I'm gonna to try to fire up, give it up to high RPM, and then plug the intake. That's gonna create large amounts of vacuum right here in the carb and pull a lot of shit out of the orifices. important to hold the throttle wide open and it's also going to flood the hell out of the engine so you have to keep the throttle wide open to get it started. Looks like this one's actually going to need some help. I think all the rust in that tank plugged up our whole system up until the needle and seat. So let's go ahead and take this carb off and give it the old Honda bench rebuild. Why does it not leak? That doesn't make any sense. But then again, they never do. So the hardest part about a Honda is keeping the damn oil in it. Not that it needs it, but it makes a mess. <laughs> well, John takes the carb off the one with the potentially bad transmission. I'm going to take the, <laughs> take the tank off the one with tires. Yeah. Now I can tell which is which. What's the deal? Ejecto carburetor, cuz. All right, I got the orange tank machine's tank ready to come off. Oop, there we go. We'll still flush it out with some fuel to get the dust out. What the hell was that? This was under the tank. It's a Castrol oil cap. Zing. Totally made that. These are looking mighty fine on this one. And it looks like it's already pointed to a position. Alright, here we go. I don't know what that noise is. That's new. I don't remember that, do you? I do not. Is it 20 gears maybe? See if I can seal it off and make it pull from the bowl. I tried a couple times. Oh man, that's a lot of engine noise I don't remember hearing. What happened? I'm really good grinding noise. I think we need to take this carb off as well. If you're trying to get these carbs off, it is a pain in the ass. If you're lucky, the bolt will be in the right position that you can get through from behind with a 10 mil and crack that loose enough 
go in with your fingers and get her off. All right, we got our carburetor off. Let's go ahead and give it the Honda bench rebuild. Screwdriver, pop, pipity pop. I think one of the reasons these did so well is they used really big O-rings. So that instead, instead of paper gaskets. Yeah, so that even when they're shrunk, it's fine. <laughs> like this is what I would consider totally junk, but I know it's gonna be fine. It's got like crap on top of it that I can scrape off. I'm still gonna put it on. Still not gonna leak. <laughs> Well, the needle and seat appears to potentially work. Go ahead and take our float, float pin, and needle out. Set those to the side. Pop our idle jet out. He's a little sticky. There he goes. A little bit of varnish got in there. Set him to the side. Pop our main jet out. Oh, oh, it's perfectly fine. Emulsion tube holes look great. Main jet's clear. Carb body's clear. <laughs> For both idle and main. Ooh, idle jet might be plugged. <laughs> idle jet is plugged. So this is a nice little tool I have for cleaning these small engine um, jets. Go get yourself a set of torch tip cleaners and fish them through these jets. Make sure you find the right size, obviously. Or if you want to overfuel something, make sure it's the, the wrong size. That is our throttle set for the idle speed. And this should be our mixture screw, I believe. Okay, there's our carb mostly disassembled. I have all the rubber off so that I can spray it with brake clean. And I'm not going to hurt these seals. There's only two in the entire carburetor. Get some brake clean working around in there. Busted all this crap loose. Boop, 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 boop. Dry the seal off the best I can. Oop. It's still above this surface, so looks like she's good to go. Oh, there we go. I didn't want to do it, but it's open. Oh yeah, okay. There's our fuel problem right there. This carburetor is honestly probably fine besides the uh, idle jet, but this is why she won't run. Oh wow, look at that. Just junk. Look at this. I think we're still going to be able to use this because the filters are still intact. They're just plugged up with rust from the uh, tank. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and proceed with going through the rest of this carburetor until all the poop is gone and then we'll put her together. All right, we've made some progress. I've oiled this gasket here with some WD-40, let that expand. Um, I did replace the gasket on the filter in here because he was too worn out and stretched to go back in. I couldn't get it to reinstall, so I did have to get one new gasket. Got everything cleaned up here, looking good. Uh, the carb itself is cleaned up. If you guys are looking for tips on how to clean these, I'm sure there's videos out there on the internet. Basically, I just go through with a can of brake clean and scrub everything down with a brush and some rags and get everything clean so I can see what I'm working with. And then make sure to blow out every single hole that fuel or air are supposed to pass through, be it the feed for the needle and seat, the main and idle jet, um, the idle mixture screw, and then these two ports here on the front need to be blown out as well. Basically, just take your time. Probably going to use about three quarter of can of brake clean. But go through and make sure everything flows with no restrictions. And then you can start to reassemble. Ideally, you do get a rebuild kit and you put new gaskets in and hope they fit. Um, a lot of the time, things I found with cheap like Amazon or eBay rebuild kits is that these jets and the rebuild kits aren't the right size and you'll run into all sorts of tuning issues. So either get a high quality kit or try your darndest to clean these out so you can use these original jets. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and then we'll start on the second one. I imagine you're probably supposed to take this whole pipe off but that's a gasket and this is an o-ring and I don't have a gasket for that. Make sure not to cross thread the top cap where your o-ring will not seat. You'll have a massive vacuum leak up top. There we go. Let's go get our makeshift gas can and see if this thing lights off. 
Eh, it's overflowing. <laughs> Needle and see it's sticky. There we go. Alright. Let's see if it runs. See if our mixture wants to move. Now will it go in gear? No, it will not. I think this one's got some transmission problems. Hear it? It's out of fuel. Yeah, it's out of fuel. Well, we got a runner. I'm gonna hop on the old interwebs and see what we can do about that transmission not being a, well, a transmission. All right, we got the cleaned carb on the other bike, the one with the orange tank. Let's see how it runs. Some weird stuff now, making a little more engine noise than it did before, and well, not running. She's leanest. How is it running with that plugged off? Oh, you know what? John loosened this bolt and never tightened it back down. <laughs> it probably just has a, yeah, there's fuel sipping out right here. It just has a huge vacuum leak. I bet this will make a huge difference. Looks like it's maybe moving fuel. Emphasis on maybe. It's not hot enough to be boiling, which is what happens when you see this. Usually it's boiling the fuel and the uh, expanded gas will escape and this fuel level will not go down. It's not doing that right now, um, but it's doing something really weird, that's for sure. Wait, is there just a vacuum in this? Oh, oh that'll, do it. that'll do it. It was boiling because it was under vacuum. Okay, let's try this again. Smokes like a Honda, that's for sure. Will it move though? Run 
on, just unplug the key entirely. If you want headlights, put the uh, red and black wire together. To shut it off, put the black and black and white wires together. All right, this sucker's got one hell of an oil leak, and there's no hope in running very long with that. So we're gonna tip her up so the oil gets away from where we're missing a bolt right here, and do our best to maybe JB weld that. All right, let's get this gasket sealer on there. Okay, that's potentially fixed our oil leak. Uh, well, that sets up. Let's go ahead and see what we can do about the transmission on the bat trike. Let's see what the damage is. Oh, goodbye, gasket. Yeah, there was definite water in the... Oh, yeah, look at that. There's a water line. Yep. That's not supposed to be water. No. I mean, it's not ideal, but it's also a Honda, so... What, I, what I'm guessing, then, is all of your... All of your gears and your... Everything or all yeah, something might be good. This should be able to move. That's a whole lot of spit movie in there. It's making noise now. I didn't do that before. <laughs> nice. <laughs> all right, we're gonna play with this and learn how Honda transmissions work, and then we'll be back. Okay, so we've been playing with this for a bit and referencing our ATC repair manual looking at what's under all this so we don't have to take it off. And I came over to look at it because this star wheel is not moving when everything else is. But I was looking around and right here, there's a broken spring. So yeah, I think this arm that goes here into our index wheel is where our problems lie, at least the beginning of them. So see if we can get all this out of our way and get to him. Unfortunately, we can't get a clutch sprocket tool in time uh, to get this off. I don't have one. So we only have, potentially, one machine to ride today. And that's just, that's just no fun. That's not going to fly. So last night we threw an ISO on Facebook Marketplace uh, in search of three-wheelers. And I bet I have 30 messages this morning. So we're going to take a quick trip down an hour south and go pick up a couple to ride for the rest of this video. All right, we're back. Angus is here now too. Hi. So it's it's the dream team. You guys, I think this is the first time you guys have actually finally met yeah, each other. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Our gasket sealer has had more than enough time to set up, so we're gonna go ahead and put this thing back on its feet and see how much oil comes out. Done. Look at that. No leaks. Uh, let's go ahead and put our plastics and tank back on. Get those cleaned up as well and see if this thing's a rider. Woohoo! <laughs> Look at this! What a fancy machine! Alright, there's a clean tank. These guys are switching the seats because for whatever reason they found it necessary to put the black seat on the bed of plastics instead of the duct tape seat. Black goes with every outfit. Tell me when. Just keep spraying. <laughs> you ready? Oh. Oh. Kevin, we've restored your three wheeler for you. What a machine. Let's see how she looks. Ta-da! A Honda 125M, ready to hit the river. After we put some air in the tires, I totally forgot about that. It's rusty, it's full of crap. The rear end's still totally junk. The front tire's from a lawnmower, and the headlight's falling off, so. Let's go take the sucker out and see how she rides.
That'll stay on in the river. frame bikes, say 125, and uh, they are they are more tippy and a little more brutal than like the 200s or the 185s. I don't know if that's the tire size or what, but one thing I know is if you're tall, you can't turn because you got knees. I just cut those off. You ever use those? Oh, I'll just yeah. What do you say we see if that 200 runs? So anticipating the worst that we won't be able to fix the other 125, we thought we can't just go riding with one machine. We gotta have a second. It would be kind of boring sharing. So we picked these up this morning because they were only an hour away. We were able to head down there and snag these guys. So let's unload this uh, 200. I think it's an 81, and throw some gas in it and see if it runs. This guy said it hasn't ran in a couple years, so it should be pretty easy to breathe some life into it. It's a Honda. Yeah, sure is. See, this is the best part of a Honda is you can unload and load it with one person. Even the big boys. Hear that, John? You're a big boy. John, you're going to break your ball. <laughs> All right, don't do that, kids. <laughs> That's not how. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, let's get it inside. Oh, sweet. That's your boot. That's what <laughs> right That actually made sense. It's actually a not bad for toe strap. It's not good. It's good enough for this. We'll probably need it. We'll just hang on to that one. It's got plastics and tires that hold air. They're actually really nice too. Fun fact, this might be the nicest one I've ever owned. I was going to say, this is like pristine this, for you. This might be the nicest machine I've ever owned. All right, let's see what it does. Do a little full choke. Since this video is pretty long already and we have completed the 125M's revival, which was the focus of the video, I'm going to give you guys a quick overview with what went down with this ATC 200. This had supposedly sat for a mere three years, so we thought we'd be able to fire it right up. As you can see in the video, we did get it running by pull starting it, but then we brought it into the garage and all the weird anomalies began to happen. Nothing was consistent and things kept changing on their own while I was trying to dial this carburetor in. Eventually, I gave up and took it off the bike and realized where all of our problems lied. Oh, everything makes a little more sense suddenly. That is not a Keenan carb. This is a uh, Chinese knockoff, I believe. I don't recognize this name anyway. What do you say? All the knockoffs that I've ever bought for Keenan say Keenan on it. This one didn't even like try and lie. I mean, it's maybe something different that's like still a brand. I just never heard of Kukma. 
I knew at this point things were about to get fun. I was going to have to seriously dial in this carburetor and spend some time on it to make this cheap piece of junk run. Pro tip, if you still have your original Honda carb, do all you can to save that carburetor. They are so much better. After a quick timing chain auto tensioner adjustment, I was able to rebuild our carburetor, put it back on the bike, and had it running in no time. I say running, but it wasn't running great. It took me another half hour to dial in the needle height before I finally realized that the fuel selector switch for whatever reason was plumbed backwards and only one of the settings was flowing fuel. Once that was fixed, we were able to dial everything else in good enough to make this thing run and drive. All that was left at that point was to shine up the plastics and wait for the sun to come back up so we could ride the river the next day. Thankfully we had John to entertain us with a beautiful song in the background. John. Oh, you're recording? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I was wondering why you were so brave. <laughs> By the end of the night, we had a beautiful ATC 200 that smokes more than a diesel under load, ready to rip up the river alongside the 125M the next morning. cleaned up way better than we thought. Uh, we will be back in the morning to go riding. Okay, so with that, we're finally ready to go ride the river, which we're going to do tomorrow morning because it's, it's dark out. So we'll see you guys next week on Junkyard Digs where we go and rip around in the river with this 125M and this 200. This should be a blast. I'm really excited to see how this 125 does. We'll see. It'll be interesting. It's total. I've never ridden one like this before. Of the, of the small one, which is crazy because I've been doing this for years. If you guys like this video, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, uh, follow all my friends. John, who's starting his own channel, right here. You can check that out. Junkyard Mook, Thunderhead 289, Dylan McCool, Classic Mustangs 429, Vice Grip Garage, DeBoss Garage, Cars and Cameras, the whole crew. We will see you guys right back here next week where we take these suckers out and rip around on the river. Peace.